Okay, so we've got this 2000 and, excuse me, 2004 Aprilla 200. Customer rang me, it's stood for years and years for various reasons, um, hasn't run it at all. Came to get it going, um, <coughs> put some jump leads on it, spins over, fuel pumps running, no sign of it wanting to fire at all. Um, long story short, turns out the injectors are both stuck sh completely shut. Um, so I've got good signal. First thing I did was quickly see if there was a spark, and there was. Um, I could hear the fuel pump running, so I assumed I had fuel pressure, but I tested the fuel pressure, and I had 40 psi of fuel pressure. Uh, and then I put my scope on the feed to the injector, which is, well, there's two injectors, one each side, um, and I got a signal to the injector, um, just pulled this off and put my probes in, and the injector was, the ECU was switching the injector. Um, then got my little oscilloscope, my oscilloscope, what am I talking about? Not oscilloscope, um, what do doctors wear around their necks? Not periscopes, what the hell are they called? Oh, for God's sake, Jim. Stethoscopes, right, got me little stethoscope, and I rested the little pin on the injector um, and cranked the engine and normally you can hear an injector click sort of a little click 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 as it's opening and closing as the engine's cranking um, and it wasn't so I thought aye aye injectors are stuck which is actually pretty unusual occasionally I've seen sort of one injector stick but for both of them to stick and to find yourself in a no start position is a bit weird um, Okay, so the, the idea of this video is I'm going to show you the um, the process of servicing a fuel injector. Anyway, I'll show you the injectors now. So this is the um, the testing machine thingy bob. Um, it's an as new one, uh, as in as new. Uh, made in Australia, I think, or I think the guy that designed it was in Australia. Um, awesome piece of kit. Got me out of uh, trouble many times. Um, so what I've got at the moment, I've got this uh, machine set to do nothing apart from just pulse the injector. So if I push this button and come over here, you can hear these injectors clicking. And when I took them out of the bike and was doing this and wanting them to pulse, they were completely dead. But I just tapped them on the, on the bench and they came to life, so they were only just stuck. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll put them in the machine and I'll, um, I'll show you basically the, the sort of process of servicing them we in, in a nutshell what we, what we do is um, put them in the machine exactly as they are um, and test the flow rate and test the um, spray pattern how it's atomizing the fuel uh, and record that and then what we do is we'll take the filter basket out of here um, and put them in the, in the ultrasonic bath which is this basically the injector will sit in the ultrasonic fluid um, and it'll be run through an RPM cycle by this machine. Um, the idea is that the ultrasonics get inside the fluid, get sucked up inside the injector. The process of the pintle inside, moving backwards and forwards, draws the ultrasonic fluid up inside it, and then the ultrasonics don't care that it's inside the injector, so basically it's cleaned internally as well. Because the way these are manufactured, there's there's no way they're crimped together. You'd, you'd break them trying to get them apart, so it'd be impossible. To, um, to actually physically get inside them and clean them. So ultrasonics are the only way of doing it. Um, you can use chemical cleaners, people, uh, Red X, things like that, various different stuff on the market. In my opinion, and it's my opinion only, of course, doesn't really work. Um, I've had bikes with injector problems and customers have put all sorts of stuff through the in the fuel and run it through the injectors. doesn't really make that much difference or if it does make a difference it's hardly measurable um, this is really the only way of, of properly cleaning an injector um, anyway I'll show you, show you them in the machine now right so the first thing to do with this machine is you've got to set the fuel pressure if you like the pressure it's going to run at so we go to if we can do this holding my camera at the same time we need to go to uh, prime and then we click yes and it will run the pump and then this gauge here, we need to adjust the fuel pressure to 40 psi or thereabouts, which is the pressure that the bike would supply fuel to the injector at. So that's the first stage. Right now, the next thing to do, um, I should probably give you a sort of a brief explanation of how this whole thing works. So down at the bottom here is a um, the brains of it, if you like. This panel um, does various things, but in essence, it 
um, is all to do with controlling the injectors so you can change the duty cycle, the pulse width, the RPM um, of the way it fires the injector. Um, and then on this side here you just saw me adjusting the fuel pressure there's basically a pump in here down inside there is a tank full of fluid which is the same viscosity as pump fuel um, but obviously not flammable because electrical connections and atomized fuel mixed together would probably be bad um, big fireball maybe um, so you've got a fuel pump here drawing um, the fluid from the tank and then it feeds the injector in the same way that your bike would um, so the fluid down in, into this fuel rail um, at the set pressure that we've set and it's feeding the injectors and then the control panel does the rest if you like fires the injector so the the first thing to do um, is to prime the injectors which means bleed the air from them because um, if you can imagine this pipe now I've just put these injectors in this fuel rails full of air the pipes full of air so it'll just run the um, run the pump quickly um, and fire the injectors and get rid of all the air right so that's that now then the next thing is a leak test um, now what this does is it runs the pump but doesn't open the injectors because what you can have you can get what's called dribbling injectors so if you look at the end of the injector in there if I run the pump what we're looking for is a bead of fuel forming on the end of the injector and I think we're good um, and you can also as this is running you can pull and push on here and increase and decrease the fuel pressure because it's often maybe I should turn my LED off it might be easier for you, my light my flash it might be easier for you to see in there they're not leaking though they look fine um, it's often the case that you'd think more pressure would equal a injector that leaked more um, but it's often the case if you reduce the pressure by pulling on this let me run that test again and show you um, and then we've gone so back to leak test um, click go it's often the case that if you decrease the fuel pressure the injectors tend to leak then because you're obviously the pressure of the fuel is pushing against the pintle and, and sort of wanted to hold the pintle shut um, so often if you reduce the pressure they start to leak but so what I do is I, I'll sort of increase and decrease the pressure on the injector um, there's no sign of any dribbling I think it's going to be a, a straightforward clean just to um, improve the way they are. Anyway, so the next stage is to do a resistance test. Now this, what this does is it doesn't run the pump, but it dynamically tests the internal resistance of the injector. So if we click yes, so it runs the injector without fuel pressure. Um, and if we look down here, so that's in ohms, so that's 13.9 ohms, that's perfect. And then the, the countdown there, look, it's counting down. So we just watch this to the end, it's not going to change now. He says it probably will, now I said that. So they're good. Um, it's difficult to get an exact spec for a dynamic test on an injector, but from my experience, anywhere between 10 and 20 ohms is good. And if you've got four injectors in, you can often see a, a duff one because one of the values is you know way off compared to the other three. Um, but I'd say anywhere between 10 and 20 ohms. They're normally around 15 ohms, so that's they're absolutely spot on. Okay, then the next uh, the next test is going to be the flow test. Um, so this is sort of two things. The flow test is, if you see here, we've got duty cycle um, and RPM, so we can whoops, we can change the where are we go in. Uh, yeah, on the flow test here, we've got different duty cycles and different RPM. So you see the RPM change and the duty cycle change. Now there's an auto. Uh, where are we? Uh, I can't find it cranking that one there so that's what whoops where's it gone that one that's the one I normally use for my diagnostic so um, it opens and closes the injector between 3 and 12 milliseconds between 600 and 10,000 rpm 
um, and you can inject a little bit of that can't speak you can inspect the um, the way the injector atomizes at the different RPMs so that'll be the first part and then we'll move move this rack over and we'll put it in here and we'll compare the amount the volume that the injectors are um, producing if you like so let's let's run this test and have a look at the atomization it's difficult to see with the flash on so I'm just going to stop this uh, I'm just going to stop this I'm going to turn the flash off because you might be able to see it a little bit better okay so this this might be a little bit better for you so off we go so so we're at 600 rpm the duty cycle down here is changing get it in focus both angles it's actually not too bad the one furthest this side um, isn't particularly great okay so then the next test is we'll move this well oh, sorry I can't see what I'm doing and we'll move this rack over onto here and then I'm gonna run the same the same flow test twice uh, I'll show you why we get a it amplifies a difference if we run it twice so what we're looking for is a is a, a big difference in the amount the injectors are producing I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with these injectors I think they were just they're obviously a little bit dirty and they're uh, stuck shut or oh, they were stuck shut Okay, so we're on the second uh, second cycle, if you like, of this. Um, the idea is that if there's a small difference on the difference in capacity on the first cycle, excuse me, on the first cycle, it'll obviously be double once we've run the cycle twice. Um, these injectors are actually very, very good. There's virtually no difference. settle yeah they're absolutely bang on you'd really struggle to get two injectors to produce exactly the same amount like that so that's not a problem at all right so on to the next stage okay so the next part of the process which is going to be pretty difficult to film um, and do one-handed this special tool that we've got here there's a filter basket in the end of the injector there what we do is we screw the injector in that into the filter basket um, and then we squeeze this and it pushes on the injector and pulls the filter basket out so I'll show you that once I've just uh, just done it ok so there's the filter basket removed if we can get it to focus so it's just like a tiny little you can see it's just like a tiny little sock if you like um, it's actually not that dirty I'm not sure whether that's in focus so then the way it comes out is I've got the tool screwed into this one um, and get it to focus so it's screwed in and then you this this arm comes out and then if you squeeze it hard pops the pops the filter basket out simple as that really and then obviously you replace the basket with a little filter basket with a new one um, when you've done cleaning the injector and then having that filter basket removed allows the um, ultrasonic fluid it gives it an easier time it sort of percolates up through the injector as the injector is running in the end of the in the end of the injector so the injector will sit in the fluid like that in this little tray and then it'll be run through a cycle but I'll show you that happening in a second right okay so then the next step is um, to actually clean them so on the machine here we just go uh, yeah to clean and then there's it's a 20 minute cycle um, and there's different modes there's slow medium fast and automatic and that's basically the RPM cycle um, so what we do is we've got the injectors in the in the ultrasonic tank here we turn the tank on oh god that hurts my ears almost um, and then we press go on here so that starts the injectors firing you can hear them running um, and then if I vary this automatically you can hear the difference 
injector, it revs the injector up and down if you like. Um, that's medium. And then that's slow. But I always use automatic um, and it varies it through the 20 minute cycle um, between those, those fast, slow and medium speeds. Um, I normally do two or three cycles of 20 minutes just to make sure I've got them properly, properly clean. Um, and that's it pretty much now. I just gotta, well, I'm not gonna sit and um, watch them clean. I'm gonna go and make myself some more tea and have some breakfast. Uh, and then come back, back out and see how we get on. Here's a little bit more info. Now they've been running a couple of minutes. You can see that Right, we're quite a way into the cycle now, I've got a couple of minutes left. Um, I'm having issues with audio recording because of this ultrasonic tank making lots of RF type noise. Um, I just wanted to show you this uh, this last little bit, so I'll, I'll probably do a dodgy zoom and manoeuvre onto these injectors um, and try and keep the camera still. If you can see the fluid now has uh, percolated out through the top. Um, which is what I was explaining, the, the action of the pintle going up and down inside the injector basically sucks the ultrasonic fluid up through the injector um, and earlier on, and unfortunately I wasn't filming at the time, but you get this sort of milky substance come out the top which is all the old congealed fuel that's been blasted off by the ultrasonics um, so that's basically the process happening, I'll, I'll wait a second for it to end, it's got two minutes to go and then I'll set it off on its way through another cycle. I think probably two cycles is going to do. The first cycle gets rid of most of the um, the rubbish that comes out of the injectors and then if you look now the RPM has slowed down so we're back down to, oh it doesn't show, automatic. We're back down to, where are we? No I thought we're, we're on slow or not? No we're on medium and the fluid can't quite stay in the injector, it's dropped back down, so it looks like the injector only has the ability to suck the fluid up on a fast cycle. Um, I think it depends on the design of the injectors more than anything else. Anyway, dodgy zoom back out. Uh, I'll let this run to the end now and uh, set it going again. Okay, so we're all done now. It's been a while. I've had several cups of tea. Uh, three cycles it's been through actually not two um, so these are the replacement filters this looks slightly different because they're aftermarket ones um, but they're the right size and easily flow the <coughs> you know they're not going to be a bottleneck is what I'm saying they'll flow enough fuel without a problem um, what I'm going to do now is going to put the new filters in these cleaned injectors and then put them back in the machine and then we'll test again and see what differences we've got So there's no trickery really to fit in these um, <coughs> filters, that's a new filter in there. Um, basically the process is you just get a get it focused down here on this injector. So the new you got the new filter with the injector, you literally you just get the um, filter so it's just started and uh, something hard, a hard surface, give it a bash. And, uh, and there it is. Filter is fitted, simple as that really, nothing technical there. Um, right, these are ready to go back in the machine and we'll see what sort of results we get. I've just um, put these injectors back in and uh, just gone to prime them and you can see, um, I actually think they probably need another cycle but see that white goo that's just been injected out start the injector you'll see uh, it just fired a load of white mush out of the end of the injector so they probably need another couple of cycles that's basically the fuel that's been uh, the fuel that's sort of been emulsified by the ultrasonics I can straight away see I don't know quite whether you can see it on camera, there's better atomization. It's 
Let's run that again. So as that's running, you see, if you look down at this screen, you can watch the duty cycle change and the RPM. They're much happier injectors they are. Right, we'll see um, see how much they're flowing now. Okay, so I think on the first run we did when we tested the volume of these injectors, I think it was 84 or 85 mil. I need to go back and have a have a look. I'll put it on the screen. I think it was 84 mil. So we're gonna run this um twice. So For some reason, I haven't got a pulse count, and it normally shows me that, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Anyway, so we get the milliseconds, number of milliseconds, the injector's open, RPM of the engine and the duty cycle. Okay, so that's once, so where are we at? Uh, right, let's run it again. Theoretically, we should see a little bit of an increase in the amount of volume they can uh, deliver given that they were actually quite dirty so our target is going to be what 84 mil see what happens Yeah, that's pretty much what I'd expect. A couple of cc's difference, pretty much identical still, but they're just flowing that little bit better, um, which stands to reason because they were full of stale fuel before. Um, there you go then, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna fit these back to the bike and uh, hopefully it will run. If it doesn't run, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. Scratch my head a little bit, but I'm sure it will. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but I think this is like my second video in a week, which is very bizarre. But anyway, hope you enjoy it. Cheers, thanks for watching, bye.